Warning, the following review contains low poly violence, blood and gore as well as scenes and images that may disturb some viewers. If this sort of content is not your thing, then feel free to turn away now. Viewer discretion is advised. We seem to be entering a renaissance of horror games at the moment and I'm not just talking about big players like Silent Hill and Resident Evil to name a couple. The indie horror scene is alive and kicking with developers like Puppet Combo and Chiller's Art. And today we're going to be looking at one of Puppet Combo's horror games with Stay Out of the House. A low polygon or low poly first person survival horror inspired by PlayStation 1 visuals with low budget 70s and 80s slasher films with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the Hills of Eyes being the obvious influence. The game has been in development since 2018 and the full release includes Night Shift, a short game which acts as the game's prequel and prologue. This review will go into spoilers but I will keep major plot points and surprises spoiler free for full enjoyment. You start off in Night Shift playing a woman named Deborah who is dropped off by her roommate Amber to start her appropriately named Night Shift at a gas station. As Deborah walks in and relieves her co-worker, she is told that the bathrooms are locked and the keys have gone missing. After punching in, Deborah can choose to do the side jobs left by the manager such as putting stock away and sweeping the floors. She can also choose to explore the freezers or play an arcade version of Power Drill Massacre based off another game by Puppet Combo. Throughout her shift, customers enter the store and you get to choose whether to serve them or not. Between customers, a mysterious van also drives around checking the place out. Eventually, a third customer walks into the station and asks whether Deborah is working alone. Regardless of the answer, the customer walks around the store stopping to look around and even try to watch Deborah before buying a bottle of alcohol and leaving. Shortly after he leaves, Deborah finds that the bathrooms are unlocked and someone has entered the back of the store. While investigating, she is attacked and the real game begins. Several days later, you play the role of Roxanne, a young woman traveling through Oklahoma with her boyfriend Brendan who teases her over having slept most of the trip. Brendan eventually stops for a bathroom break and Roxanne wakes up later to find that he hasn't come back. After checking the bathrooms and finding Brendan's driver's license behind them, she eventually follows the path to an abandoned mill. Following further, she comes across a friendly dog which follows her as she navigates the nearby cornfield. The dog leads her to an abandoned vehicle with the owner's belongings strewn about and as Roxanne continues to follow the cornfield, she eventually arrives at a farmhouse manor which the dog proceeds to bark at before rushing in. Against her better judgement and the game's title, she goes into the house hoping to find her boyfriend or maybe even ask the folks inside for help. After exploring what looks to be a badly maintained house, she finds the dog caught in a bear trap and frees it. As she goes to explore the upstairs part of the house, she's startled by an elderly lady in a wheelchair coming down screaming at her, which alerts a large masked figure who proceeds to rush right up to Roxanne and beat her unconscious with a hammer. Roxanne wakes up feeling ill somewhere in the house at night and must now try to find a way to get out and stay out of the house while avoiding the horrors that lurk within. But is this game any good? Find out in The Good. I really do like the gameplay. In Stay Out of the House, Roxanne will need to use every item at her disposal and her wits in order to stay undetected or get away from the house's inhabitants. As Roxanne explores the house, the masked figure, whom I'll refer to from this point as the Butcher due to his activities, will start patrolling at random intervals and the game will warn you if he's nearby by having the screen go static. You can also enable a stealth meter in the form of a light meter which tells you how visible Roxanne is as well. The Butcher will initially just start patrolling the house and will investigate any loud noises. The elderly lady in the wheelchair can initially be found in the lounge and if spotted by her she will scream which will immediately alert the Butcher. If Roxanne is caught by the Butcher she will awaken in another part of the house during what is presumed to be the following night and will need to escape. Any items that she was carrying when captured will also be taken off her and stored elsewhere. To make matters worse, the wheelchair lady will now be actively patrolling the house too. She will also do this on the first night if you are spotted by her and get away. You can escape capture by crawling into the air ducts or hiding in the darkness or under a bed or table. As you progress through the house, you will need to find items to solve puzzles so that you can access different areas. Once you move to a new area, the Butcher will then start patrolling those areas too. You only have three chances at escape before it's game over. Exploring the house knowing that the Butcher or Wheelchair Lady could be just around the corner or nearby really raises the tension of the game and I found that I really needed to slow down, observe surroundings and even think fast to get out of potentially bad situations. 
Crouching, which enables you to sneak, is what you'll be doing for most of this game, as running around will make noise and alert the butcher. The game also has visual effects, so you can experience the game with a CRT filter, as well as visual filters resembling a VHS tape, simulated 1999 PS1 visuals, a more pixelated 1995 PS1 visuals, or 16mm film. While I can see the appeal of the visual effects and CRT filter, I stuck with the default as it did make notes more difficult to read, and I could feel it having a detrimental effect on my eyes if I looked at it for too long in full screen. With the filters off, you may find textures warping and stretching, but I think this is to provide the intended look and feel of a puppet combo game, and the visual style really works in favour of it. You can save your progress in the game, however you do need to collect VHS tapes to do so, which not only take up valuable space in your limited inventory, but also requires you to go to a specific save room in the events to do so. VHS tapes are limited, and are in randomised locations when you start a new game or load a save, and you really need to balance up when it's an appropriate time to save too, which I liked. I appreciate how the AI of the Butcher can learn from your habits, and will try to counter Roxanne sneaking around appropriately. Once the Butcher is aware that Roxanne has escaped her cage, he will start placing bear traps around to slow your movements, and waste valuable time trying to free yourself. He will also randomly turn on lights and rooms while he is looking for you, and although you can hide from him, he will react accordingly if you are spotted hiding from him. If under a bed or table, he will upturn them, exposing you and making that spot useless to hide in again. And if he sees you going into a vent, while he is too big to follow you, he will flood the vents with gas to flush you out and try to predict where you would come out. You can inconvenience the butcher by disabling his bear traps with a screwdriver, and setting them up as your own, as well as making yourself immune to setting your own traps off. Or you can briefly get the butcher to flee by shooting him with a gun you can get in the game, or by stabbing him with a knife. These will temporarily cause the butcher to leave the area, but it will not defeat him as he will be back before long. The other inhabitants of the house, such as the wheelchair lady, can be permanently taken out of the picture by shooting or stabbing them. If the butcher finds out that somebody he cares for has been killed, he will go on a frenzy and start throwing around nearby beds and tables to try and find you before calming down and becoming more aggressive while patrolling by being able to move faster, and hear sounds from further away. Once caught by the butcher, he will also start setting up security cameras which you can choose to avoid, destroy or disable. If you choose to explore the bunker in the house's basement, the butcher will lock you in, and will walk around with a light to try and find you. His dog will also be patrolling the bunker, though he can be taken out either before entering the bunker to avoid the trouble, or while it's patrolling. The dog cannot see very well, but his hearing is better than the butcher, while the wheelchair lady is the opposite. I think the game's AI really adds to the game's challenge, and works hand in hand with the gameplay for the most part, as I will explain later. The game's story and approach is another thing I enjoyed about it. The game has several endings available depending on Roxanne's performance and actions. If Roxanne is caught three times, or spends too much time looking at the TV in the room she's held captive in, the game over sequence doubles as an ending. She can also successfully escape from the house through the front door, easier said than done, or try to explore the bunker for another way out. As you explore, you can also pick up notes and newspaper clippings to build up the game's lore, and to learn more about what's going on as well. These notes can also act as puzzle clues directing you on where to go or by giving you access to certain areas too. I think the approach is quite refreshing over having to deal with lots of dialogue and cutscenes to build on the story and world. This doesn't mean that I don't like dialogue and cutscenes, I just think this game has handled conveying its story mostly through its notes and puzzles very effectively. While the game does have some enjoyable features and content, it's not perfect, so let's talk about the game's flaws in... The Bad the game I felt was a buggy experience, for better and for worse, and this also affected its AI. I will go a little easy on Puppet Combo here though, as by the time of this review, those bugs are probably being looked at, or even patched. The radar in the game which detects motion has been an absolute godsend in navigating the house. However, it does seem to pick up movements outside of the radar screen. Some of the enemies respawn when a save is loaded up. In Puppet Combo's defence, I did start capturing footage after a patch which prevented a couple of them from reviving, but the dog which I put down before entering the bunker, came back to life when I reloaded a save in the bunker, and I discovered it wandering around, to my surprise. The only reason I've decided to talk about the bunker at all in this review, is because when starting a new save, you can actually start from the bunker, regardless of whether you've entered it or not. And I'm not sure if that's a bug, but I feel that it should only be an option once you've reached that part of the game. 
some items will sparkle and are unable to be picked up, and I also had some issues with interacting with things such as the door pins on the second night. I'm not sure if this is a bug or not, but the wheelchair lady who only becomes active if she's senior from the second night onwards will become active if you reload a save, even if you're on the first night and haven't been spotted yet. Sometimes the butcher will just stand there inactive, allowing you to explore the house and bunker freely until either a forced event happens, you reload a save, or if you've set off his AI by shooting something, attacking him, or walking into his vision range. The biggest issue I had with the game was with a bug that I think I may have triggered when I shot a door in the attic to unlock it. I wasn't able to enter the door and the bug effectively prevented me from picking up things, interacting with certain things, and ultimately escaping a bear trap. It did however allow me to explore the house as the butcher, while alerted by my sounds, would harmlessly go to me and not do anything. With that out of the way, I don't have any other issues with the game, so let's look at… The Opinion. Stay Out of the House is a genuinely tense and scary experience, which is what I would expect from a horror game. The stealth gameplay and puzzles combined with the AI of the Butcher and other inhabitants of the house, along with its story and lore being told through notes, as opposed to long stretches of dialogue and cutscenes really makes it. The game does at the time of this review still have some bugs, but Puppet Combo appears to be on top of it and responds quite regularly as well, so I appreciate the interaction from the developer, even if the worst bug forced me to restart my progress. Maybe bugs might be part of the charm. I mean, it is inspired by older low poly games visually after all. Nonetheless, if you're a fan of horrors, then this game, as well as the other games in Puppet Combo's library, are definitely worth looking into. Especially if you like the style of this game, and want more. So with that, it's time for my rating. I would give Stay Out of the House Hank out of 10. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next Infinite Backlog Review. Hey there, thanks for watching through to the very end for the review of Stay Out of the House. This review was episode 300 and it's been quite a journey since the first review under the Infinite Backlog name, Half-Life Source, was uploaded back in August 2014. Since then we have changed equipment and refined our review styles, and some of us have moved on and others joined or stuck around. For those who have been with us from the beginning of our journey, joined us along the way, decided to follow with this video, and for future fans and subscribers, I would like to say on behalf of 16bit slash Dan, Stingo slash Justin, Dr Pebble slash Josh, and myself, Seraph slash Sam, thank you for all the support over the years. It means a lot to the channel, and if any of our reviews influenced your decision on whether to get or not get a game, or even try it out or not based on a game's good or bad aspects instead of what number out of 10 it got, I'm happy knowing that our content has helped. I hope you guys enjoyed Stay Out of the House as episode 300, and here's to more reviews in the future. Once again, thank you for watching.